You gotta hear about this new PS5 feature. Did the PS5 Pro just get delayed? And Sony is making a huge mistake with the PS5. How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. The first news story I have for you today is that you can get a very small deal on PlayStation Plus. Yes, right now during the Deal Days event, you can stack three years of PlayStation Plus Essential and instead of paying $180 like you normally would, you'll pay $170, which, you know, isn't exactly the biggest savings in the world, but if you plan on subscribing to PS Plus Essential over the next few years, it might be worth just dropping down the 170 bucks now now and not having to think about it at all for literally three years. And while your subscription is active, you can upgrade it to PS Plus Extra or Premium whenever you want, which ultimately might end up making it cheaper, especially if you wait for a sale on Extra or Premium, which will definitely happen within the next three years. Because even around Black Friday, Sony loves to put these memberships on sale. So if you grab this deal right now, you're going to be getting the three October games for PlayStation Plus Essential, which are super hot, Injustice 2 and Hot Wheels Unleashed. I'm more mixed on Injustice 2 and Hot Wheels Unleashed, not because they're bad games, they're both actually really good games, but it's the same problem we had last year when they gave us Mortal Kombat X and it didn't come along with any of the DLC. Like Injustice 2 has been out for a long time now, there's an Ultimate Edition that includes all of the extra characters and skins and all that stuff. Why wouldn't Sony just pay the extra money to make that the free version? Because you can go to GameStop right now and probably get a copy of Injustice 2 on PS4 for like 10 bucks. So yeah, not the greatest inclusion. And the same thing goes for Hot Wheels Unleashed. That game came out and had a pretty good package at launch, but since it released, they've put out so much DLC, like packs and packs and packs of new cars, and people are just kind of getting fed up with it. So it would have been nice to see some of that extra DLC included there as well. But then finally with Super Hot, that's just a great game top to bottom. And I think the VR one is considered to be a little bit better, but you could have a lot of fun over a weekend just grinding your way through it because it's one of the cooler shooters out there. So yeah, it's 170 bucks for three years of PlayStation Plus. If you guys aren't feeling that price, maybe wait until the end of November because during Black Friday week leading up till Christmas and the other holidays, there's going to be even more deals on PlayStation Plus. At the very least, they'll discount a year's worth of it by more than $10. So yeah, you might even be able to stack three years of whatever the discount is and pay less than 170 overall. So yeah, I'm gonna say hold on this one, uh, especially because the games are kind of lackluster this month. Sony is going all in on the PSVR 2 and people are just seemingly curious about this thing. Like there's no doubt that the hardware is going to be a massive improvement over both the PSVR 1 and even something like the Oculus Quest 2. So yeah, I'm pretty interested in it and I was just curious, like is Sony going to support this thing or is it going to be another Vita situation where if it doesn't light the sales world on fire from go, they just abandon the PSVR 2 brand as a whole and move on to the next thing, which I don't know what it will even be. But it really seems like they're in it for the long haul because Bloomberg is reporting that when they launch this thing early next year, they're going to have 2 million units ready to go for consumers to pick up, which is a big number of PSVR 2s. I don't exactly know how many PS5s they had when it launched, but yeah, getting 2 million sales out the gate, if people really are excited for this thing, that's a great way to really launch the brand into the stratosphere. I mean, just for comparison's sake, the Steam Deck literally just hit 1 million unit sales and yeah, it's a great milestone for them because they're able to ship it right away right now if you order it alongside their new dock. But when you compare that to having 2 million units ready to go at launch for the PSVR 2, you can see that Sony really wants this thing to be big. And honestly, with the games that we've recently seen that are coming to this thing close to launch, I could see it catching on in a pretty big way. Guys, I'm cutting in real quick here that the budget over at Jim Enterprises has been increased and I can do new ads. So once again, this video is sponsored by me. I have a bunch of links down in the description for monitors, PS5s, headsets, controllers, any accessory you can think of for your PS5, it is linked down in the description. If you wanna support the channel, the best way to do it is to use those links when you're buying anything for your PS5. I mean, I even have links to the newest games down there. So there's nothing you can't click on. But with the launch lineup Sony's already announced for the PSVR 2, it's hard not for me as a fan of VR to at least get a little bit excited for it just because a lot of the games look really cool. But there's two games I really think Sony needs to figure out how to get on this headset day one to really show that this is the best VR headset. One of those games being Half-Life Alex. Normally I would think this would never happen mainly because Valve makes their own VR headset. But we just saw them release the Portal Collection on the Nintendo Switch, which is another weird move and we've seen them release on all consoles 
consoles before. So really, all bets are off there. I feel like Sony could definitely make it happen. And if they don't let their pride or their ego get in the way, they should make it happen because Half-Life Alex is literally the best VR game, like ever. It's just like the best one. It's gonna be really hard to beat, even by Horizon Call of the Mountain. So if they just have the best VR game ready to go, close to launch, there's no reason not to. The other game I'd really like to see at launch is Boneworks. This is my favorite VR game, even though Half-Life Alex is the best. My favorite is Boneworks, just because you can literally do anything you want in this game and it has it all. This was actually pitched to Valve to become a Half-Life game, but they were literally like, uh, we're working on a Half-Life VR game right now. So unfortunately we're gonna pass on this one, but they released it as their own game and it is just so good. But the reason I feel like Sony needs to go out and get this one is that this is like the VR game to get anyone over VR sickness because it throws anything at you and everything at you. Like you'll be doing flips, you'll be flying through the air, you'll be shot at, you'll have stuff thrown at you, you'll be throwing stuff, you'll be lifting different weighted objects, like anything you can do in VR, you can do in this game. So that's why I think it would be a great game to have at launch for PSVR 2. So at this point, I'm sure you've heard that Horizon Zero Dawn is probably getting a remake like The Last of Us did for the PS5 generation. And people are rightfully so in some cases, and in my opinion, not rightfully so in others up in arms about this. The people who are upset about it are saying, why is Sony remastering games that still look and run super well on the PlayStation 5, like Horizon Zero Dawn, while they're ignoring games that people have been begging for that run like shit on both the PS4 and PS5, like Bloodborne. And from one perspective, I definitely see what they're saying, right? Like I, out of all the games that could be remastered, would also love to see Bloodborne remastered. And also Sony's got an even deeper back catalog of games like the Resistance series, the Infamous series, all the PS3 games, like even they, if they could get the rights to like the Metal Gear games, I'd love to see an upscaled HD collection on the PlayStation 5. But Horizon is a specific game that I feel like makes sense for their overall strategy because they're releasing a Netflix show within the next couple years that fits into this game's universe. So what Sony's doing is making sure that if someone watches this upcoming Netflix show and goes, damn, that's really cool. I would love to play some Horizon. And then they go to the store and get a PlayStation 5. They don't only have one option option sitting there as a brand new PS5 game, right? Like they're gonna see Horizon Forbidden West, which is the sequel, and they're gonna have like zero context for what's going on in that world outside of what they saw in the show. Whereas if they have a nice shiny PS5 box sitting there with Horizon Forbidden West, maybe even a two pack of both games, then they can jump into the universe and play it from start to finish. And the trap I always fall into is that, yeah, it's available on PS4, it's been given away for free, they could just do a patch or something like that. But most people, the people that they're trying to attract with these Netflix shows and things like that are not us. They're not the hardcore gamers. They're the casual person who's maybe only heard of Horizon, doesn't really know what it is, but does have a PlayStation 5 and they might be willing to take a risk on buying something other than Call of Duty or Madden or NBA 2K. And so Sony wants to make it as easy and as clear as possible to that person that they're getting getting a PS5 game that will work in their PS5. It seems crazy, but there are definitely a lot of people out there who are going to buy a PS5 and they are just never gonna know that they can put any PS4 game they want into that PS5. There's just plenty of opportunity for both to happen. What I would personally like to see is Sony make some new games for the PS5 instead of just porting over PS4 games and remaking PS4 games. You know, wouldn't that be the best option here is if they sat down and came up with some new ideas for games instead of sequels and remakes and said, yeah, we wanna go back to what we did during the PS3 generation, which was make a bunch of brand new IP that made people buy so many PlayStation 3s that we ended up outselling the Xbox 360 at the end. Like that would be my philosophy. I'd be sitting there like, yeah, new IPs are the way to go because then we can make even more TV shows and more more movies and get more synergy and release more remakes of those, right? Like we just saw them do Ghost of Tsushima and it was awesome. It's a brand new IP. It's a single player game. It's an open world game. There are 110 million PS4s out there. So we're gonna keep supporting that. And all of these new IP we're working on, we're just gonna let them keep trucking along and maybe hold them back artificially a little bit so that they can come out in 2024 or 2025 when there are enough PS5s out there. And in the meantime, all of us suckers who bought the PS5 day one are sitting here playing remakes and 
and ports of PS4 games. But for those of us who did manage to get a PS5, there's a cool secret feature you can take advantage of, which I guess you've been able to do for a while now, but it's just making the news rounds right now, which is how I found out about it. And it's actually quite useful. So we all know the way to use the web browser on the PS5 is to make a dummy Twitter account and tweet any link you want to visit and then go to the Twitter login on your PlayStation, log into that Twitter, and then click the little Twitter icon in the top left, which will take you to the timeline. And then you can click all the links on the feed. If you didn't know, that's how you use the web browser on the PS5. But there's another cool thing you can do to watch YouTube videos in the sidebar while you're playing these endless games like Destiny 2 or Call of Duty or Warzone or anything like that where it's an online live service game. All you have to do is send yourself a link to the YouTube video you would like to watch in a PlayStation party chat. And then once you're in there, you can click on that and pin it to the sidebar of your screen. So then it'll make a window that's like most of your screen for the game you're playing. And then a little like iPhone sized window for or the YouTube video you wanna watch. And the cool thing is this allegedly works with Netflix. At that point though, like why not just make it a feature, Sony? Like you already have it baked in. Why not let me log into the YouTube app and have it playing in the top right corner like I can do on my iPhone. Same thing goes for Netflix. That would be a really cool upgrade in the next PS5 update. And since the PS5 can literally do that right now, there's no reason not to make it an official feature. And the last news story I have for you today is probably gonna make you feel a little better about buying a PS5 at launch. So everyone's kind of wondering what's going on with the PlayStation 5 Slim and PlayStation 5 Pro. Most people assume that they'll come out around the same time, but a lot of people are also sitting there saying, well, it doesn't seem like that's the case because they've literally already invented the PS5 Slim, but they just need to make the chassis to let us know that this is the PS5 Slim. And the rumor we've heard there, of course, is that Sony is working on a new streamlined PS5 where as a whole, it's going to be the digital PS5. Like literally no matter what, you are buying a digital PS5, but they've managed to make it so they added an extra USB-C port on the back and you can attach a disc drive to the side of that thing. And the current side plates that you have in your PlayStation 5 right now will just work with it. There will be a little cord that sticks out the back and plug into that extra USB-C port. And voila, you have a disc edition PS5, which is obviously preferable for Sony because they're making one version of the console and then they're making a disc drive. I like modular stuff like that. I like that it's going to be able to attach to the actual PlayStation 5 and you won't even know you have a digital version at that point. So with all of that in mind, we have heard virtually nothing about the PS5 Pro, which I can like basically guarantee is coming. There's no way they're not working on it. But in my opinion, I feel like they're going to re-release the PS5. Like it's going to have a re-release party sort of thing next year. And that's going to be the actual launch of the console. They're gonna get this streamlined version out there that's a slim version. And then you can get the detachable disc drive. Then they'll start opening the floodgates on getting these games out there because obviously Obviously the supply chain issues are clearing up. Like Valve went from being six months out on ordering a Steam Deck to you can just order one right now and be able to get it. And I don't know if you ever looked at what Valve's going on there, but they just tweeted out a trailer for the Steam Deck that had a Nintendo Switch emulator on the home screen. So if they can figure out how to fix their supply chain issues, there's no reason Sony can't figure it out on their end when they're literally opening up new factories to make new chips for the PlayStation 5. So as for when we'll see the PS5 Pro and feel totally fine spending another $500 plus on that console, I'm thinking 2024 or even as late as 2025, right? Like these generations are going to keep getting longer and longer because the advancements we're seeing between consoles are really not that noticeable. Like on paper, the PS5 seems like a much bigger leap from the PS4 Pro than it actually is in reality. And that's just because there haven't been that many advancements in chip technology over the past few years. So things are just naturally slowing down. So the way to combat that, extend the life cycle of the console, release more iterative versions, take a look at Apple and what they're doing on the iPhone and you'll kind of figure it out. So yeah, while 2022 and probably most of 2023 are going to be a bit of a muted year for the PlayStation 5, unless God of War Ragnarok comes out and is literally the game of the generation, I feel like we only have good things to look forward to in the future. 